Street Worship. I'm Reverend Jen Logston Kellogg. This is Reverend Sarah Pugh Montgomery. We're so glad that you've joined us. If you would please register your attendance and let us know that you are worshiping with us. And we have a great, easy new way to do that. So mm-hmm. you can click on the link in the Facebook post. You can also download our new app. Woohoo, y'all! Just look for Boston Avenue UMC on the App Store, and there you can register your attendance easily under the Connect button. Mm-hmm. And then you can designate your giving under the Giving button. And if you don't want to do that, you can always text BAUMC to the number on the screen and give that way. So you, uh, we are in a church and we are in the business of doing ministry here in Tulsa and around, in Oklahoma and around the world. And we would love for your money to contribute to the ministry that we're able to do so that other people are served in the name of Jesus. But we would also love for your hands and feet to get involved if you're interested in missions. We would love to connect you with that as well. And... Your turn. And so as we are joining with y'all right now virtually, we are also going to be joining with each other in person. So on Sunday mornings, we invite you to come and join us outside at 13th and Boston. We'll be in the park. You can bring your own chair, but we've also got a couple if you forget yours. So don't let that leave you behind. We're going to just have a, a time of conversation around scripture Um, to have prayer together, and then to be able to have communion with one another. We will have a circle time for kids so that that way the kids will be able to be outside and kind of be able to play and learn and engage in the scripture as well. And this will be from 1130 to noon. So a shorter time frame, but a great way for us to be able to have worship together as well as having worship virtually. So we hope that you'll be able to Um, Come with us to that. If you can't come, we'll still be posting the questions online so you can be able to engage with the scripture within your own home, within your own community, gather some folks together and use those questions as a way to be able to continue our worship. So as we do engage with the scripture, we also love to engage with knowing who we are as we come together. And this is a statement that our community formed that helps us to know what we are called to do as we gather. So let us say these words together. We We are a place place to belong for all people seeking God's love without without fear. So let us lift up our voices in song and in praise to God.
If you have a candle handy, I invite you to get that and light it, and we are going to pray together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are Easter people, and we live uh, in the resurrection time looking forward to eternal life, and yet we see that much is not right in the world. And we are coming to you together in an attitude of sorrow and of compassion for those who are suffering. And we're asking God that you would relieve their suffering and that you would bring freedom and joy and life and light to all people. And we also know God that you invite us to be a part of making that happen. So today, God, we lift our prayers for those who are ill, for those who are grieving, for those who are discombobulated in any way. And we ask for your provision for them and where that provision is to come through our hands, we pray that you will inspire, empower, and equip us to do it. Bring the people to mind that we are to serve. Show us what they need and how we can be your hands and feet working to bring joy to their lives. We pray for those who are refugees, for those who face uh, such discrimination or instability in their own homes that they are forced to seek refuge elsewhere. We pray that they will find safety, not just physical safety, but emotional and spiritual safety as well, where we are called to be the place that they find that shelter. I pray that you show us how. Give us wisdom on how to set up infrastructure to help those who are seeking new life. We pray, dear God, for those who are in situations of domestic violence or of just not having enough, enough education, enough health care, enough of the daily stuff of life. We ask that you show us, God, where you are calling us to be providers, to be comforters, to be justice seekers on behalf of those who do not have enough of what they need. We pray, dear God, for the, um, hopefully, the ending of the pandemic and for those who have not yet received vaccines, for those who don't feel safe receiving vaccines, and for those who have received vaccines. This is a collective trauma that we are all still processing, and we just pray that as we switch yet again into a new way of doing life, that you will guide and direct us in how to be together in a way that brings life to all. Help us to not judge each other on the differences that we have about what feels safe and what doesn't and how to gather and how not to gather. Let each of us have compassion on the rest as we come to a new way of being together in our own time. For all the ways that you're calling us to bring about the kingdom of God as Jesus has described it to us, we give you thanks and praise for just giving us this vision, giving us Jesus to give us this vision of a place and a life where there is plenty for all, where all are loved, where all are affirmed, where all belong, where all are fed, where all have something to drink, and where all are free. Help us to make that as a reality and let us speak together now these words that Jesus taught us saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, 
wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing, you will have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So welcome to our new series on images of Jesus. We're so excited that we have just celebrated Easter and now we are looking forward to Pentecost in terms of the season of the church. And so we have this nice little period here where Jesus in the the story of the Bible has been raised from the dead and he's running around making appearances to the disciples, giving them, breathing on them and giving them the Holy Spirit and showing them the miracle that has happened and um, people are are believing left and right and we have a chance to kind of celebrate for a while. We've been Mm -hmm. in this season of Lent which was a time of um, repentance and of sorrow and of preparing for Jesus' death on the cross and the crucifixion and the bad stuff, right? Now we are in Happy Land. Happy Land. Yeah, I always like to remind people if you're a Christmas and Easter kind of person, Easter's 50 days, y'all. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, you're in it to win it for 50 <laughs> days. It's not just the one Sunday. It's not just 12 days like Christmas. Uh-uh, there's a lot of them. So, welcome Easter people. It's good to have you here. Yeah, right. We are all Easter people. And that's kind of, you know, as we sort of think about this theologically, you know, oftentimes I know in my seminary, and I'm sure in yours too, they always talked about how we are, um, like, we are innately Easter people. Right. You know, and this whole idea of thinking about, you know, Jesus and and resurrection and abundant life and kind of what all that's inviting us into is the part of these 50 days. And, and as we kind of look at that within each one of these uh, storylines, we'll get to encounter a new image of Christ in each one of them and kind of see the way that perhaps we're a part of that narrative as well. Right. Now, just a note that as we go through this series, we are going to be talking about some stories that happened before the crucifixion and the mm-hmm. resurrection. But what we're looking for are those ways that Jesus was trying to tell the disciples all along, listen, you're right. going to have eternal life and you're going to have it through me. And they're like, but we don't understand how. <laughs> so this is the uh, kind of the, well, this is what it's going to be like. Right. I mean, now that we know the end of the story, we can look back at the rest of the story right. in a different lens as well. And that's sort of what Thomas does for us. Right. You know, in a lot of ways. And and today we want to kind of reclaim Thomas. Mm-hmm. We want to reframe how we see this disciple. Right. So poor Thomas, he got this nickname <laughs> called the Doubting Thomas mm-hmm. uh, because of this story. And we're going to kind of reframe this Doubting Thomas story into believing Thomas. And not just believing Thomas, but engaging Thomas. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we've already seen Thomas a couple of times, specifically in the Gospel of John. So he appears before Lazarus is resurrected, when Jesus says, hey, we're going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. And Thomas knows that this is going to be trouble, uh, that this is going to get Jesus in trouble. And he says... Well, let's go to Jerusalem with him so we can die too. (laughs) In that Eeyore voice. And then in uh, chapter 14, when Jesus is saying, this is what I love about Thomas. And we've, we talked about this. Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth and the life. Uh, You can't get to the father except through me. Thomas is the one that everybody else is nodding along. Like, yeah, like they know what he's talking about you, Jesus. You are the way, the truth and the life. And Thomas goes, 
excuse me, <laughs> I do not understand. He's that great, like, you know, the, this disciple that's just so childlike, you know, it's yeah. like this little, like, you know, whippersnapper that's kind of just <laughs> running around and, and engaging with the tech, you know, and engaging with Jesus in the ways that so many are afraid, you know, they're right. afraid to ask those questions. They're afraid to raise their hand <laughs> to the Messiah and be like, I don't really get what you're saying, dude, you know, but I love that about Thomas because I've done that too. You right. know, it's like what you always talk with us about at the beginning of our 13th Street worship is, is how are we bringing the questions? How are we allowing ourselves to raise the hand and to say, I don't get that because there are parts of faith that it should be a challenge. Right. It should be something we don't get. Like if Jesus is trying to say to me, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, I probably don't know what that means if I've never been told that before. Mm -hmm. And so thank God for Thomas. <laughs> right. <laughs> for making Jesus slow down and explain That's some right. more. So this, in this story, Jesus has just been resurrected last week at Easter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get a drink here. Enjoy my coffee cup um, with water in it. So uh, Mary had discovered that Jesus' tomb was empty and mm -hmm. then some other stuff happened. And then Jesus went and appeared to the disciples and breathed on them and Thomas wasn't there. Mm -hmm. We didn't read that Poor part. Thomas. But we picked up where Thomas says, yeah, y'all say that happened, but I wasn't there. I didn't experience it. I'm not gonna believe it until I experience it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, not just experience it, but until I put my mm -hmm. finger into the nail marks on his hands and put my fist, my like hand, shove, shove my hand into his side, I absolutely will not believe it. Like he uses a double negative just mm -hmm. to really emphasize mm -hmm. that I absolutely will not believe it. And I, um, the, the fact that he, he's all about seeing and feeling mm -hmm. for himself, mm -hmm. I think this fits right along with the whole narrative of the Gospel of John and mm -hmm. how Jesus is very touchy-feely with people and how bodies matter. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not this disembodied, um, you know, spirit kind of God. No, this is Jesus flesh and blood. Yeah. Right. I mean, talk about some mess like our last <laughs> sermon series. I mean, this is like, yeah, Thomas wants to engage with the mess of life and yeah. with the mess of the resurrected Christ and to say like, I'm not going to believe this until. And so it's, you know, it's this interesting piece because Thomas has a very, um, within this narrative then has a condition to faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and comes into it and is like, I ain't going to believe until, you know, right. and until this and until that. Um, and then once Jesus comes into the room. Mm -hmm. Now, this is eight days later. Mm -hmm. Remember, he had to sit with that for a whole week. Yeah. Which I think is great. I think it's hilarious. Because, you know, I'm impatient. I want it now. <laughs> I want the answers now. Yes. <laughs> and so then Jesus comes back, enters the room into a very locked room, which I think is always a great part of this story, but enters into the room and, um, and it's like, you know, basically like, Hey Thomas, here I am. Like, here's the nail mark. Come on. Here's my side. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do this thing, you know? And Thomas doesn't have to have the conditions anymore because right. the experience occurs, right? Because he's, he sees the risen Christ is right there in front of him. So he didn't need to completely feel everything in that moment. It's like he just needed to know that Jesus was willing for it, to mm -hmm. have, you know, for mm -hmm. to let him do it. Mm -hmm. And then he gives the most complete confession of faith mm -hmm. of anybody in the entire gospel. Mm -hmm. He says, my Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've had other characters that recognize Jesus as Lord. We've had other characters recognize Jesus as Messiah. But Thomas says, my Lord and my God. It's like a complete understanding and belief, um, knowledge of the truth, you know, all of those things that we've talked about. I just... I know, I know. Okay, so the other thing that we've talked about with this is how much people um, w that we've talked to when we talk about having had an experience of Jesus that is that uh, particular to us, 
there are people who haven't had that mm -hmm. and are waiting for that. So mm -hmm. what do you th what do you have about that? Yeah, well, and we kind of talked about it a little bit with, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about painting mm -hmm. and talking a lot about the mess of life and, and kind of seeing Ashley Oman, you remember, the, doing the painting throughout Lent. And um, so it's, it's kind of, you know, what Thomas showed us a lot during this is the different ways to experience you know, so there yeah. you could read a book about painting and you can read, um, you know, about um, how how this painter did this impressionist work. Um, and that's great. You're engaging on a certain level by mm -hmm. reading it. But then you could also go to an art museum and be able to see it in person and be able to experience it that way. And so you're kind of, again, taking another step um, and then you have a third step, which is about being able to actually do the art on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, so being able to to be the artist. And so each one of these steps, as we see with Thomas, that you know he kind of takes it through each one of these pieces, being mm -hmm. able to to ask the questions and to learn and to wonder about who Jesus is. And then being able to engage um, by, you know, by saying like, well, let me see these things. And then actually doing it, mm -hmm. being that disciple and living into that. And so that we are all at different places, you know, within that circle. Right. We're all going to be in different stages, and perhaps um, some of us are at um, at the spot of still needing to read or to to learn or to ask those questions. Perhaps some of us are at the place where we are, um, you know, actively um, engaging within our faith and kind of going to a church or going to a small group or going to a Zoom study or or you know in seeing church as a part of um, your everyday life within creation. Um, and then another group of us are within that spot where we've become the artist, mm -hmm. you know, and we're now being able to paint that image of Christ for others right. as well because we've had an encounter with Christ. And so as we kind of think about that analogy and kind of how that, um, how that continues to grow within our faith, that there's there's a way of thinking about then how are we preparing ourselves, you know, for that? How are we how are we being open to that experience, to that personal encounter? You know, right. not not everyone has had that yet. Yeah. You know, and it's frustrating. I, I mean I had a really good friend when I was in Philadelphia, one of my great friends from college, he was um struggling a lot because he had still, you know, at that point he was probably 24 um, and had not had that personal encounter and experience like I had had. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, what does that mean, Sarah? Like, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I mean, I can't say that then I'm better than, I mean, obviously I'm not better than he is because I had had it already, but how, how do we get ourselves ready for that? Well, and part of it is getting ourselves in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Thomas mm -hmm. just wasn't in the room the first mm -hmm. go round, and so he missed out. And so how do we, and I don't, I, yes, I am a pastor, and I think the church is one of the primary ways that we encounter God, but it is by far not the only way. Yeah. And there are lots of church experiences where you may experience community, you may have a good time, but you may not encounter God. Mm -hmm. And it may not be, that may not be the right room for you. Mm -hmm. And so some of it is mm -hmm. finding what's the right room. Where am mm -hmm. I likely to encounter the risen Christ? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's getting yourself there and, and being there consistently enough mm -hmm. um, and paying attention consistently enough and being in an attitude of receptivity and not defensiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how are you open to that? Mm -hmm. I mean, even with Thomas, I think that's an interesting point you made with how he had to sit for eight days. Yeah. You know, so he was very um, conditional within those questions initially of like, this is what I've got to see in order to believe it. And then he had to wait. Yeah. And so maybe that receptivity wouldn't have been there if mm -hmm. it had initially been able to have seen Christ right after those, like, 
let me see the hand, let me see the side, you know. But maybe he had to have those eight days to become more open. Right, and what we each need in order to ex actually experience Christ is different. Like we talked yeah. about Mary Magdalene, for her it was Christ, it was Jesus speaking her name. Yep, yep. And for Thomas it was this much more physical need um, for more uh, tactile mm -hmm. evidence. Mm -hmm. And for, for some of the other disciples in the room it was just Jesus showing up and saying, I'm breathing the Holy Spirit on you, and that was enough for them. Mm -hmm. So I think as we kind of explore this whole idea of images of Jesus then, um, I, you know, I loved what you just said about where's that room for you? You mm -hmm. know, how is it that, that you encounter um, Christ? What's the space that you're going to be able to be the most open to, um, to being able to experience Christ? And it it's not going to be the same for everyone, mm -hmm. um, but being able to discover and explore that for your own self is is a step of readiness and a step of getting prepared. And that um, that Christ is ready to meet you, right. you know, ready to meet all of us. And so, um, what's that? What is the best opportunity for us to be able in this Easter season, in these 50 days, um, and that maybe during one of these Sundays you'll hear uh, a, an image of Christ that really speaks to you and be able to think, how can I get myself into a space that would open for that? You know, you and I are going to move around to different spaces to mm -hmm. deliver, you know, these, these messages and this sermon. And so maybe there's a space that will speak the most to somebody and, and, you know, they might think, oh, like maybe it's in my living room, right. <laughs> you know, maybe it's just in the room or it might be outside or it might be, you know, in the midst of a baseball game or, you know, wherever it is kind of that, that God wants to meet us. Absolutely. Yeah. And so how can, how can we be prepared and, and how can we find that space that is what will allow us to be open enough mm -hmm. to being able to meet God because God's ready. Right. Yeah. You know, and so how are we getting ready? Yeah. Mm. That is great. Well, I am so excited that next week we will be talking about uh, the next chapter in John, John chapter 21, and we'll get to see Peter's conversation with Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it will happen um, at the shore. And so will we. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be great. So we hope that y'all will um, listen for the ways that God is speaking to you and, yeah. and um, tell us where it is that you're going to be able to encounter Christ. So go for it. Yes, Jesus loves me. glad you joined us today and I hope you can get on board with Thomas and engage in the wrestling with your own belief and what that means for you. I hope you'll continue to join us for this series on images of Jesus. And I hope you will join us for Pub Theology. If you're in Tulsa, we're starting Pub Theology back up. It will be this Tuesday, the 13th at Neff which is at 3rd and Frankfurt in downtown Tulsa, 6.30 to 8. And we will do some wrestling with faith and life. All are welcome to attend. And all are welcome to become members of Boston Avenue through 13th Street Worship. If you are not already a member and you are feeling like this is the place that you belong, we would love to have you join us officially. If you've never been baptized, just let us know and we will baptize you. If you have been baptized in any other Christian denomination, then we affirm your baptism and we will just ask you a couple of questions about your intent to join with us and be a disciple alongside us. And if you can say yes to those questions, then we'll put you on our official rolls. 
So as you go back out into the world today, we invite you to go and to engage with those questions that are sitting in your head or at the, you know, your gut, and you might be a little bit afraid to ask, but ask them. Be a part of being able to engage with Christ within the world, and that as you do, be reminded that you are a beloved child of God, you're deserving of love and respect, and that God's going to use you to change the world. So go on out and be that change. Amen.